Hey everybody, Manny Talabera here. I want to welcome y'all back to the Seven Figure Climb. We're now on day 64 and we're going to talk for just a few minutes about the profit. And then I'm going to tell you a few Jay Abraham stories. So in my opinion, the profit with Marcus Lemonis is probably one of the better ones that you can watch to really learn about a business. And one of the things you, one of the things you might take away is everyone kind of has, has their own unique trademark if you look at Marcus, Marcus Lemonis, I think his thing is people, process, and product. Evan Pagan, you, your market, your marketing, your people, your systems. When, when you see me talk, I talk a lot about the five ways to grow, increase leads, increase conversions, increase average transaction, and so on. Uh, but I think that the, the profit is really, really good, and, and mostly because he's investing his own money in those businesses. He is legitimately writing a check investing in those businesses and he owns owns a piece of them and then he's basically getting trying to show, figure out a way to turn those around and so those are that's very very valuable because you don't really get a glimpse into anything much like that and as far as the reality goes that one's this one's probably really good now there are a few others out there that we might mention one of them is the next great inventor the next great inventor is is really really good because it was people who created things. They created inventions. They ran out of money. And they're in front of a group of potential investors, and they're trying to convince someone to back their idea and take it, you know, take it the rest of the way to production. And it, it's really solid. What's interesting about it is it looks fairly legit, and these people invest sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars, sometimes millions of dollars. These people like borrow money from their house against their house to get it get an idea off the ground without having any kind of proof of concept and it, it's very very interesting the, the, the next great inventor is very old you might find it on like netflix or hulu or um or amazon prime and it might even be on youtube but if you can find it i think those are very worthwhile to go through and the next one is billion dollar buyer Billion dollar buyer. His last name, I think, is Pertino. And he's, I think he's a multi billionaire. He owns quite a few hotels, casinos, restaurants. He's very, very big in the hospitality and uh, hospitality industry. And he's basically interviewing people to sell their stuff to his restaurants. And it, it's it's worthwhile. And he's he's extremely sharp as well. As a matter of fact, if you can find any find a lot of the interviews on him. And there are many, many interviews out there. He's well worth watching. And by the way, for Tito, his sons are the ones who invested with Dana White and they bought the UFC. Actually, Dana White found the UFC, brought it to the Fertito brothers. I think he went to school with, with them and they 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 made the investment and they gave Dana White 10% of it. And I probably tell you a lot more about that. But what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about Jay Abraham for a few minutes. And what I want to do is I want to tell you how he accidentally made twenty million dollars. Before I tell you how he made the accidentally made the twenty million, kind of need to set it up just a little bit. So there's a couple of stories here. And so Jay, way you know, way early on in his consulting after he went to entrepreneur, he was doing really, really, really well. And I think he said at the time he was worth twenty million, and the um, the Guthy Guthy Rinker contacted him, and they wanted him to come in and help them with a infomercial for Anthony Robbins. I think it was get you know it wasn't personal power. It was the very first one. It might have it, it might have been personal power. That might have been the first one. And they basically wanted to hire Jay, and they wanted to Jay Jay to actually partner with them. But they came to Jay and Jay said at the time they were worth about a million dollars. He was worth about 20. He was very busy and he didn't want to do it. He didn't want to partner with him. And so what he did is he said, you guys really should contact Dan Kennedy. Uh, Dan could really help you all with this and he might be a better fit. But Jay also went ahead and helped them and he didn't charge them anything. So he gave them a lot of input and advice, but he just said he didn't want to want to be partners or anything. And um, and so ultimately, they they launched this thing 
And they did, what, what's interesting is they end up hiring Dan Kennedy and Dan worked with for Guthy Rinker for, I think he worked with them for over 40 years. Dan might even still have some kind of, uh, I'm, he, I'm 100% know he still has ties to them, but he might still actually be doing some consulting with them because he's basically consulted on everything that they've, they've done ever since they started. I mean, every infomercial that they put out, he was involved in. So they they actually launched this thing. Tony Robbins takes off. And by the way, when they went to Tony to do this thing, you had to keep in mind, Tony for 18 months went all over the country and made less than $30,000. And the next year, I think from the commercial, he ended up making 20 or 30 million. And so, and Jay was very, very instrumental and in, instrumental in that thing taking off. So fast forward about nine years or so, and I don't know exactly how long it was, but Jay, he ultimately went broke and Jay, by his own account, Dan Kennedy, all of them have these stories, rags to riches, making a lot of money, spending a lot of money, making a lot of money and spending a lot of money. And Jay had left entrepreneur and he went through a few business partnership breakups and he'd split up with his wife. And then he met someone else and he kind of followed her around for about 16 months. And so he didn't work. And he said that he ran out of money. He said that he spent all of the money he had. And he also actually owed about $200,000. And he also said, he did say that he did go through a midlife crisis at this time and that affected him and he couldn't work. He just didn't feel comfortable with working. And what's interesting is Jay said, He's went through like three of those. He said he went through a midlife crisis in his 30s, one in his 40s, and one in his 50s. And so Jay went broke. He owed about 200000 And Jay came up with the idea of doing a protege program. And the protege program, they're going to sell it for $15,000. And they were going to, he figured they would sell maybe 30 to 50 of these at tops. So they didn't, he didn't think they would sell that many, but he, what he was thinking was if they sold like 30 or 40 of them, he basically get out of debt. And what Jay's mindset was this, the, the protege programs were very simple. It was basically come to me and Jay was going to teach them how to do marketing. It was going to be basically how to be a marketing consultant. And he was going to he was going to teach this to three types of people. People who wanted to actually go out and be marketing consultants for a living. People who had a business but wanted to add consulting to the business and go out and do consulting part time. And then people who had businesses who wanted to actually just learn all of the school skills to grow their own businesses. So he's kind of marketing it to three different people. And he thought they would sell like 40 or 50. Well, I don't know who, who he went to first, but he went to someone and he had them do a mailing for him. And they sold like 140 seats into this thing at 15,000. And when they sold 140, Jay said, well, this thing's taking off. I've got to sell more seats. I need to put like three or 400 in it now. And we're just going to turn this into a business for a while. Because like I said, he didn't think they were going to sell that many. Remember, he he act, he 100% accidentally made the 20 million. It's very interesting. So he goes to Anthony Robbins. And Anthony Robbins at this point is very, very, very big. And Jay just went to them. Jay said, look, you sold your people personal power. You sold them personal power too. You sold them get the edge. You don't have anything else to sell them. Why don't you just do a mailing for me and sell the sell the uh, the, the the protege program? And Anthony Robbins did an, did a mailing for Jay Abraham. They brought in nine million dollars from this mailing, and Anthony didn't take any of the money. He let Jay keep all of it. And he basically did it to pay Jay back because Jay helped him so much previously. As a matter of fact, Jay said they ended up doing well over $20 million. And he said he, th he thinks they spent like $150,000 on, on marketing and advertising because the rest of it was joint ventures with all of these people he had in, he had uh, helped in the past and they, they didn't take any percentage of it. And so 
Jay planned on doing, keep in mind, Jay planned on doing one of these and thought he would sell 30 or 40. Well, Jay sold like 400 and they ended up doing like six of these in seven, seven months or something like that. They ended up doing six different protege programs in seven months at 15,000 a piece. I think one of them, they even charged 25,000 for it. And this basically planted Jay in the seminar business. And once he got into this thing, he basically right after like so right after he did the proteges, they started doing masterminds. They started doing mastermind programs. And after the mastermind programs, he did the did the PEQ, PEQ2, and PEQ cube with, with Chet Holmes. But Jay for about a period of five to seven years just basically did you know did all did all of these sem seminars and my understanding is he made well over a hundred million dollars but the the money that he made in that first few months it was the 20 million and jay said that he basically went from broke to 20 million dollars and he said that he couldn't figure out why he wasn't happy with 20 million dollars and so he ended up spending $200,000 on therapy because he couldn't understand. He just really felt like if he made that kind of money, the world would open to him and all of these great things would happen. And he said, really didn't work out that way. And one more story about this. It's very interesting. So Jay, he, he meets like three or four or five therapists and he interviews them all. And he picks one. He picks a psychiatrist and thinks the guy is just great. And he basically says, I want to hire you for like a month or two months. I don't know what, what the, what the number was. He said, I want to hire you. And I don't want you to take on, I don't want you to have any other clients. I want you to have your office open eight to five. And I want you to be available and available to me only. And Jay said, and I'm not going to show up very often. So Jay said, what I'm going to do, because I'm not going to be there. I'm going to meet my friends who I feel like could use your help who need some help in the psychiatry department. And I'm going to send them to you so that you can fix them because you're not always going to be fixing me. And that's how Jay burned through the 200,000. But what's interesting, again, spending that, you know, creating something, didn't think it would make any money, thought the money would actually come from all of the other, you know, from the people bringing him deals. And it ultimately uh, ended up coming from, from the actual seminars. And what's interesting is this was a that they had this thing locked down. I mean, they're selling seminars for fifteen thousand dollars a seat, and the reunion cost twenty five grand. They um, they recorded all of the events, and they were selling these the, the recordings of these events for like five thousand dollars. I mean, five thousand dollars for twenty eight cassettes. And I can tell you, I that that's how I got involved with all of this. Is I accidentally bought one of those sets on eBay and I started studying it. But I thought I'd give you some insights here. I hope you got some value from this one and we will see you all on the next video. And thanks a lot.